Okay, let's look at some examples of processes that are spontaneous and talk about why. Uh, first off, uh, let's consider the combustion of propane. Take a look at the uh, balanced equation for it and think about whether or not uh, entropy increases in this reaction. And also think back to past lessons and decide whether or not you think this is an exothermic or endothermic reaction. This reaction is uh, increasing in entropy. You can see that we are going from six particles to seven, uh, and the product particles are a little bit less complicated than the uh, reactant particles. Namely, propane is a more complicated molecule than either carbon dioxide or water. Uh, this is obviously an exothermic reaction. Fire definitely gives off heat during, during the process. Next, melting ice. Is this, this is a spontaneous process. Let's think about some of the conditions. Does melting ice increase entropy and is it endo or exothermic? When water melts, it's going from a more orderly solid ice to a less orderly liquid water. So entropy is increasing. For this to happen, heat must be absorbed by the ice. So that makes it an endothermic change. The, I also want to point out, I didn't ask this, but I want to point out that the temperature of the surroundings, if the ice is the system, the temperature of the surroundings is relatively higher than the ice. That's going to be become important when I sum everything up. All right, let's talk about the reverse. It, freezing water is also a spontaneous process under the right conditions. In this case, we have liquid water becoming solid water. What happens to the entropy, and is this an exo or endothermic change? When you are changing from liquid to solid water, you're becoming more orderly, so entropy, which is disorder, decreases. And for liquid water to become ice, it has to give up heat. So it's an exothermic change. Also, I want to point out that this uh, happens when the relative temperature of the surroundings is lower than the system. Uh, this picture, by the way, is showing a person uh, throwing hot water into the air on a really cold day, and it instantly crystallizes. All right, photosynthesis is an example of a non-spontaneous process. Pause this if you need to and take a look at the balanced reaction and also look at the diagram about what is happening generally. So in the process of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water combine to create glucose, which is a kind of sugar, and oxygen. If you count up the reactants, we start with 12 reactants, but we are only making seven particles of product. Also, you can tell from the molecular formula that glucose is a more complicated molecule than either carbon dioxide or water. So this process decreases entropy. We are making more order. Also, photosynthesis requires solar energy, so that means it's an endothermic reaction. Let's sum all this up. What we saw was that with fire, which is an exothermic entropy increasing reaction, it was spontaneous. If you're trying to determine whether or not a reaction or a change will be spontaneous, something that is exothermic and increases entropy is always going to be spontaneous. This is uh, because of the laws of thermodynamics. When something is, when a change is endothermic, uh, but 
inc and entropy increases, it will be spontaneous at higher temperatures, in other words, melting. So if there's a higher temperature which will provide the energy for the endothermic reaction to occur, uh, it will definitely occur, especially since entropy is going to be increasing, which is what things tend to want to do. If a reaction is exothermic but creates uh, lower entropy, uh, an example that would be freezing, heat is given off but things become more orderly, uh, this will happen spontaneously at lower temperatures where the surroundings are lower. So ice will not, water will not freeze spontaneously in a warm room, but it would in a freezer or outside on a very cold day. A change that both requires energy to be put into it, in other words, an endothermic change, and something that decreases entropy, um, so makes something more orderly, is not ever going to be spontaneous. It's breaking the second law. So try some of these out. Is burning a match a spontaneous reaction? It is. Um, this, I use this example because this one often causes confusion because there's this idea that, well, it's not spontaneous. Matches don't spontaneously catch on fire. You have to strike them. Well, striking them is providing activation energy. Once you start them burning, however, they will continue to burn. So burning a match is a spontaneous change a spontaneous chemical reaction. It will continue to burn until it burns itself out. You don't have to keep supplying heat to keep it burning. How about instant cold packs? These are the cold packs where you uh, break open a little pouch inside a larger pouch and shake it up and uh, the gel becomes colder really quickly. These work on the reaction of dissolving a substance. Uh, it, traditionally, it was ammonium nitrate. And when it dissolves, it becomes ammonium and nitrate ions. And uh, the dissolution of the ammonium nitrate is endothermic. So it makes the water much colder when it dissolves. Is this a spontaneous reaction? Yes, it is. Um, it is, uh, this is an endothermic reaction, but it increases entropy because dissolving increases entropy. So it solves um, one of the two situations to make something spontaneous. And in other words, increasing entropy. And even though the the pouch is not hot, it, at room temperature, it would still be um, provide warm enough to supply the heat for the endothermic reaction to occur. All right, take a look at the goals and see if you um, could explain all four of them. And I hope that you found uh, this lesson helpful and I will check in with you soon.